Good morning everyone the topic for today's module is Simon Commission Lahore session and Nehru report so before starting the topic let's understand the objectives of the topic the objectives of the topic are to understand the emergence of Gandhi ji with his movement at Champaran Kheda and Ahmedabad agitation against Rawlitt act Jallianwala Bagh massacre the Khilafat movement the non cooperation movement and its impact simon commission nehru report the gandhi irwin pact the civil disobedience movement and its impact and in today's module we will be discussing the lahore session the nehru report and the simon commission there is a module on your screen you can see that is upsc main GS paper 1 history syllabus it covers modern indian history significant events personalities and issues during the middle of the 18th century till the present indian freedom struggle which we are discussing stages important contributors and contributions here in contributors and contributions the nehru report the simon commission and lahore session of the congress where poorna swaraj was demanded plays an important role so if you are preparing yourself for the civil services this is an important topic the gandhi philosophy the lesson itself that we are doing the non cooperation and the civil disobedience movement that we are doing in the previous module and the one civil disobedience movement we will be discussing in next module now let's start our today's topic that is simon commission and lahore session first we will discuss the new terms of the topic the new terms of the topic are pro changes the group of leaders who were in favor of contesting the election of legislative council and wanted to bring changes in the working of the congress these were the leader, leaders who wanted changes in the working of the congress they did not have the same views as mahatma gandhi no changes the group of leaders who did not favor contesting elections in legislative council and followed the traditional gandhian methods of working of the congress party the no changes were the supporters of mahatma gandhi who did not believe in fighting in election and they were in favor of boycotting the election and believed in traditional methods of mahatma gandhi of non violence and satyagraha the next term is swaraj swaraj means self rule within british empire it should be clear that here swaraj doesn't mean complete independence it means both indians and british would rule side by side with equal partnership simon commission the commission appointed under the chairmanship of sir john simon to review the reports of montague chems for reforms of 1919 the montague chems for reforms were introduced during the first world war in order to make indians happy as british wanted the support of indian soldiers during the first world war after the first world war the reforms were brought in india called as montague chems for reforms but these reforms were unsatisfactory so in order to review these reforms simon commission was appointed in india let's see the next terms of this topic nehru report the draft prepared under the chairmanship of motilal nehru which demanded dominion status from the british government dominion status it means the country is free to control its internal policies but is dependent on some powerful country for external policies that means for its internal policies like health education the country is free but when it comes to defense and foreign affairs the country is dependent on some powerful foreign country and in nehru report also motilal nehru demanded that india should be given a dominion status dominion status can also be called as half independence communal representation 
the representation given on the basis of religion NWFP it stands for North West Frontier Province it was a province under the British India and dated of Pakistan so when india was divided this area was given to pakistan it was established in 1901 and wfp was established in 1901 and came to be known by the same name of north west frontier province till 2010 the area came to be known as khyber pakhtunwa on 19 april 2010 by act passed by the parliament of pakistan which changed its name now let's see the next term of this topic separate electorate the electorate given on the basis of different religion like the area where muslims were in majority only muslim candidates were allowed to contest from those territories and in hindu dominated area only hindu candidates were allowed to contest the election that means hindu will vote for hindus and muslim would vote for muslims purna swaraj here purna swaraj means complete independence it is totally different from dominion status dominion status means half independence but purna swaraj means complete independence a country is free in its internal as well as external policies now we will recapitulate the previous topic that we have done in the previous video in the last module we have discussed about the non cooperation movement of 1920 which lasted till 1922 the non cooperation movement was started against the economic problems faced by the people of india due to the british policy of taking raw material from india and taking india as only a colony the passing of the rollet act and the jallianwala bag massacre program of the movement the non cooperation movement involved boycotting of schools colleges law courts and even the british goods bonfire of foreign goods was a common phenomena in the non cooperation movement and now we will discuss why the non cooperation movement was ended on 5th february 1922 at chori chora in up the peasants the followers of mahatma gandhi set the police station on fire in which 22 policemen were burnt alive this incident was a violent activity so it shocked mahatma gandhi and he ended the non cooperation movement in 1922 many prominent personalities the young generation the young leaders of congress including subhash chandra bose c r das criticized mahatma gandhi for the untimely withdrawal of the non cooperation movement the young leaders wanted the non cooperation movement to continue as according to them it was difficult for the british government to suppress this movement so mahatma gandhi could have used this opportunity to take his demands in front of the british government and get them fulfilled by the government and now we we'll do the simon commission the main topic of this module simon commission came to india in 1927 and firstly we will discuss the background of the simon commission that what were the reasons that simon commission was sent to india so let's discuss the background of the simon commission split in the congress many leaders criticized mahatma gandhi's decision to suspend the non cooperation movement after the chori chora incident as we have already discussed the leading leaders amongst them were subhash chandra bose motilal nehru and c r das the leaders who were against the decision of mahatma gandhi formed the different group within congress called as swaraj party the members of the swaraj party was also called as the pro changes so those leaders who were against mahatma gandhi's decision of suspending the non cooperation movement within congress they formed 
their separate group called as the swaraj party and the member of the swaraj party were also called as the pro changers the prominent leaders amongst the pro changers or the members of the swaraj party were chitranjan das or siya das and motilal nehru now let's discuss how it led to the coming of simon commission the group which favored the gandhian policies were called as no changes amongst them the prominent leaders were gopal chari rajendra prasad and sardar vallabhai patel the group which was in favor of mahatma gandhi was called as no changes as they did not want any change in the working of the congress the prominent leader amongst this group the no changes were gopal chari rajendra prasad and sardar vallabhai patel now we will discuss what was the basic difference between the pro changers and no changers the pro changers were against mahatma gandhi's decision of suspending the non cooperation movement whereas on the other hand the no changers supported mahatma gandhi's reason of withdrawal of the non cooperation movement the pro changers wanted to contest the election of the legislative council they wanted that in order to change the government you had to be a part of the government whereas the no changes they were in favor of boycotting or not to contest election of the legislative council as the british government was against mahatma gandhi and has sent mahatma gandhi into jail some more differences of pro changes and no changes were there the pro changes were against the montaig chems for reforms and the no changes supported the montaig chems for reform according to the pro changes the government has befooled the indian people by not bringing any actual reforms in india whereas the no changes believed that indians should have helped the british more during the first world war and they supported the montaig chems for reforms the prominent pro changer leaders were motilal nehru and c r das and amongst the no changer members were rajkopali charya rajendra prasad and sardar vallabhai patel and now we will discuss that what was the reason that pro changers wanted that a commission should come to india to review the report of 1919 the pro changers put pressure on the government to review the montaig chems for reforms as they were not happy with these reforms they were specially against the system of diarchy in the montaig chems for reforms or the government of india act 1919 now we will understand what was this diarchy according to the system of diarchy which means dual government or double government subjects were divided into two categories the reserve subjects and the transfer subjects the reserve subjects were those subjects which were most essential for any country in the reserve subjects most important subjects like defense and finance were included which the british kept with themselves the transfer subjects which were lesser important were given to the indian council or the indian leaders like health and education of the indians the pro changers were of view that even to run the less important subjects like health education of the indians money was required and for finance the indians have to depend upon the british as the main subject the finance was kept in the reserved subject under the british government so the pro changers want the diarchy should be abolished should be ended from the montaig chems for reform the british government appointed simon commission to review the montaig chems for reforms on the demand of the pro changers the simon commission was appointed in india the other name of the simon commission was indian statutory act it was appointed in 1927 we will discussing the causes of the simon commission this satisfaction with the reforms of 
द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया एक्ट नाइनटीन नाइनटीन फेल फार शॉर्ट ऑफ द एस्पिरेशन द डिजायर्स ऑफ द इंडियंस द इंडियन नेशनल लीडर्स हैड बिन डिमांडिंग फॉर सेल्फ गवर्नमेंट फॉर अ लॉन्ग पीरियड ऑफ टाइम बट द ब्रिटिश गवर्नमेंट मेड इट क्लियर दैट दे डिड नॉट कंटेम्पलेट एनी फर्दर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल रिफॉर्म्स बट लेटर ऑन दे हैड टू बो बिफोर द डिमांड्स ऑफ द इंडियंस टू रिव्यू द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया एक्ट सो people were not happy with the montague chems for reforms as we have already discussed that diarchy was not effective the main subject money was kept under the british government so people wanted a review of the government of india act or the montague chems for reform another cause that simon commission was appointed is the role of the conservative party The Conservative Party apprehended defeat in the next election to be held shortly in England. That was a time when election was to be held in England for the position of the Prime Minister. England basically was having two political parties: the Conservative and the Labour Party. Due to the act they have done in India, the Barbarous Act, the Conservative Party was afraid that in the next election they might not win. because even the local british people were against the cruel activities of the british government in india in this situation the british government announced the appointment of simon commission to accept the demands of the pro changes with simon as its president the president of this commission was mr john simon and because of his name the commission was named as Simon Commission earlier its name was Indian Statutory Act now we will discuss the members of the Simon Commission Simon Commission was the group of 7 MPs of Britain who were appointed under the presidentship of Sir John Simon in 1928 to recommend the constitutional reforms required in India the seven members of this commission were sir john simon who was its chairman clement atley who later on became the prime minister of england harry levy lawson edward cadogan were known hart shawn george lane fox and donald howard so these were the all members of the simon commission and all of them were the mps in british parliament boycott of simon commission when simon commission came to india it was protested the indian protested against the simon commission as there was no indian member in the commission the all seven member were british so it was also called as the white commission in its madras session in 1927 the congress decided to boycott the simon commission the muslim league the hindu mahasabha also supported the decision of congress that simon commission should be boycotted by the indians now we will see what was the agitation against the simon commission on february 3 1928 the day of arrival of simon commission in bombay a complete hartal was observed in all important towns in india the line of punjab lala lajpat rai who was very important assertive leader let the procession when the train reached the station the cry simon go back hit the sky police security arrangements crumbled because of large gathering of the people the crowd was so thick that movement was impossible so it became difficult for the police to control the mob the police charged with their lathis with their stout sticks on the people the blood of innocent people began to flow so government resorted to violence when people were boycotting simon commission with the flags of simon go back in the protest meeting lala ji's friends sukhdev yashpal bhagwati charan and others surrounded lala lajpat rai in order to protect him from the violent activities of the british government police officers caught saw lala ji and his bodyguards he ordered the police to beat the bodyguards a police officer named sandros came forward to do the job 
the police lathis rained blow on lala ji on the head and all over the body lala ji realized that this incident would lead to conflict and a bloodbath so he told the huge crowd of revolutionary youths to leave the place to make the place empty the crowd dispersed because of the direction given by lala lajpat rai to them now when crowd dispersed from this place the same in the same evening there was a mammoth public meeting the despicable action of police was severely condemned severely criticized and simon commission was boycotted police deputy superintendent neel was present at the meeting lala ji turned to neel and said in english so that he could understand the language the blows which fell on me today are the last nails driven into the coffin of the british imperialism that means he told that the lathi blow that he has got from the british government would prove very detrimental for the british imperialism in india the youth followed lala lajpat rai one word from lala lajpat rai to the youths would have been enough they would have let loose rivers of blood but lala ji practiced non violence strictly the country had to restrain its anger in the very week of the incident lala ji attended the all india congress committee and all party meetings he grew weak and returned to lahore so on saying of lala lajpat rai people controlled themselves lala lajpat rai attended the all india congress committee meeting and then returned to lahore he fell ill and died of a heart attack on 17 november 1928 the whole of india knew that his death was a result of the lathi blows because his body could not endure the blows that the british government has given to him so many historians believe it was a deliberate murder by the cruel police of british rule after the death of lala lajpat rai simon commission continued the work for what it has come to india and now we will be discussing what were the terms or the provisions of the simon commission provincial hierarchy should be abolished and responsibilities of ministers to the provincial legislature should be enlarged hierarchy the dual government at state level or province level should be ended and minister should be given more and more areas to operate the special power for the safeguarding of province and the protection of minorities comes under governor's power to protect the minorities the people who were less in number was the responsibility of the british and it was given to the governors of the concerned provinces the representation of provinces and other areas were reconstituted on the basis of population at federal assembly at the central it was decided that in the houses of the legislature the representation would be given on the basis of the population of the concerned provinces recommended dominion status for burma and it should be provided its own constitution it also said burma should be given a dominion status half independence and should be allowed to make its own constitution it also recommended the representation of council of state could not be chosen on the basis of direct election but by indirect election through provincial council which is more or less just like modern day election procedure as proportional representation this is a legacy of simon commission council of state or in modern day we can say it rajya sabha was established by the recommendations of this commission and it also said the member of council of state should not be directly elected it should come from the provincial legislature the same case you can see in modern day politics in india the council of state or the rajya sabha is elected by indirect voting by the state level legislatures 
Now we'll be discussing about more about the impact of the Simon Commission. The Commission's report was published in 1930. Before the publication, the government assured that henceforth Indian opinion would be considered and that the natural outcome of constitutional reforms would be dominion status for India. So directly or indirectly, the British government accepted that dominion status should be provided to India. It recommended the abolition of diarchy and setting up of the representatives at the state level. It accepted that diarchy or the dual government system should be ended in India. The Simon Commission led to the Government of India Act 1935, which acted as the basis of many parts of the current Indian constitution. It was a basis for the Government of India Act 1935 on which the modern day politics and the government is running in India. The first provincial elections were held in 1937. Under the British rule, the first time ever elections were held under 1937 and all these provisions were recommended by Simon Commission. It saw Congress governments being set up in almost all the parts of the country. So let's recapitulate what we had done about Simon Commission. Simon Commission was appointed in India to restore the relationship with the Indians, to reform the law of 1919, to offer the Indian autonomy or self-independence. Impact of the Simon Commission, it led to mass protest and rallies by Muslims and Hindus and it was rejected as no Indian member was its member. And now we will discuss about the Nehru report. The Nehru report was prepared in 1928 under the leadership of Motilal Nehru. His son Jawaharlal Nehru was the secretary of this report. This report was severely criticized by Muslims. According to them, it did not ask for the rights of the Muslims. It dominated the political scenario of that time and it also rejected the idea of the Muslims as partners in the demand for independence. So let's discuss about the Nehru report in detail. Firstly, we will understand the background of the Nehru report. The Nehru report or the Motilal Nehru report 1928 was a report by a committee headed by Pandit Motilal Nehru. This committee was created when Lord Berikhant, the Secretary of State of India, asked the Indian leaders to draft a constitution for the country. Secretary of State was the highest position in India after the revolt of 1857. The report which demanded a dominion status for India was considered by the Congress. The Motilal Nehru report recommended a dominion status for the country. Lord Berkenhead threw a challenge to these congressmen to prepare a draft of the constitution of India. The Secretary of State put challenge to the Indian leaders to prepare a rough draft for the future constitution of India. The political leaders accepted this challenge and this was followed by a call for all party conference in February and May 1928. So this was a challenge given by the Secretary of State to Indian leaders to prepare a rough draft of the constitution which was taken by Pandit Motilal Nehru by his Nehru report. In this report, the outcome of all the parties conference was that a committee was appointed under the chairmanship of Motilal Nehru to draft the proposed constitution. Jawaharlal Nehru was secretary of this committee and Ali Imam, Tej Bahadur Sapru, MSNA, Mangal Singh, Shaup Qureshi, Subhash Chandra Bose and GR Pradhan were its another members. The committee prepared a draft constitution call. The draft constitution was prepared which was called Nehru Committee Report.
So along with the other members, Motilal Nehru prepared a rough draft of the future constitution of India. And this report came to be known as the Nehru Report. The Nehru Report was prepared in 1928 under the chairmanship of Motilal Nehru. The Nehru Committee completed its task. Its report, commonly known as Nehru Report, was presented in August 1928 to counter the charges that Indians could not find a constitutional consensus among themselves. This report advocated that India would be given a dominion status of complete internal self-government. So, it demanded half-independence. It demanded independence in internal affairs that only external affairs would be under the control of the British government. Now, we will discuss the recommendations or the terms of the Nehru report. Dominion status for India. It asked that internally India should be free to control its affairs like Canada and Australia, which were the other colonies of British government. It asked that it should be equal as compared to the other British Commonwealth countries. Commonwealth countries are a group of countries which were once ruled by the British government. This point was a bone of contention with the younger set of leaders, including Jawaharlal Nehru and Subhash Chandra Bose, who favoured complete independence. Though Subhash Chandra Bose also praised Nehru for Nehru report and Jawaharlal Nehru was a member of the Motilal Nehru committee. He was in fact the secretary of this committee. His view were totally different from Pandit Motilal Nehru. Where Pandit Motilal Nehru was in favor of dominion status, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru and Subhash Chandra Bose wanted complete independence. 19 fundamental rights, including some important rights, should be given to the Indians. So it favored the fundamental rights. Federal form of government with residual powers with the center. There would be a bicameral legislature at the center. The ministry would be responsible to the legislature. This is in fact the basis of our modern government in India also. Pandit Motilal Nehru wanted there should be a federal government. A federal government is a government where powers are distributed between the union government and the state government. And the residual power, the powers which would be left out, which would not be included in the constitution, should be given to the center government only. There should be bicameral legislature. A bicameral legislature is a legislature having two houses. The ministry should be responsible to the legislature, which is a feature of the parliamentary form of government. The ministers remain in office till they enjoy a vote of confidence in the parliament. Governor General to be constitutional head of India. He would be appointed by the British monarch. A Governor General would be there who would be constitutionally head of India, but all the work would be done by the Indian ministers. And Governor General would be appointed by British Queen or King. A proposal for the creation of Supreme Court. So here we are seeing that the report of Motilal Nehru is in fact basis of many features of modern day politics in India. We have Supreme Court in our country. This was proposed by Motilal Nehru report that the highest court of the country should be created. The province would be created along linguistic lines. The provinces would be divided not on the basis of religion but on the basis of language. <clears throat> The language of the country would be Indian, though there would be many languages in India, but Hindi should be the national language. No separate electorate for any community. Motilal Nehru report stood for joint electorate. It does not want people to bifurcate on the basis of religion. It did provide for reservation of minority seats. It favoured that minorities who were less in number should be given reservation in both houses of the legislature. It provided for reservation for seats for Muslims at the center and in provinces where they were required. 
So it also favored that Muslims should be given reservation so that they could also develop in both center and state legislature as they belong to the minority group. And now we will discuss the reaction of the Muslim League to the Nehru report. How Muslim League, including their leader Jinnah, reacted to the recommendations of Pandit Motilal Nehru. In this, we will discuss Jinnah's 14 points which he has given as a reaction to Nehru report. So let's discuss the 14 points of Jinnah. Federal constitution with residual powers with the provinces. Jinnah also favored federal constitution, but he said residual power should be with provinces. If we compare it with Motilal Nehru report, Pandit Motilal Nehru was of view that the residual power, the leftover power, the leftover power which was not to be included in the constitution should be given to the center government. Whereas, Mr. Jinnah wanted that the residual power should be with the state governments. Jinnah stood for provincial autonomy. One of the reasons that Jinnah was favoring provinces as compared to center was that Muslims were not so strong all over India. There were few states where they were dominant. So they wanted that the state should be given more power as compared to the union. No constitutional amendments without the agreement of the states. Here also, Jinnah wanted that states or the provinces should be made more stronger and no changes in the constitution could be possible without the consent of the states. All legislatures and elected bodies to have adequate Muslim representation without reducing Muslim majority in a province to minority or equality. All the legislature of all the states and elected bodies should make it clear that Muslims should be given a clear representation so that they should be equally represented in all the states. Adequate Muslim representation to Muslims in universities also was one of the demands of Mr. Jinnah. One third Muslim members in central and state cabinet was asked by Mr. Muhammad Ali Jinnah. He stood for separate electorate, whereas Pandit Motilal Nehru wanted joint electorate. The people of India should vote for the voters and electorates should vote for the contestants, not for their religion. But Mr. Jinnah wanted that separate electorate should be there, as it would be only way to protect the interest of the Muslim community. No bill to be raised in any legislature if three-fourths of a minority community consider it against their interest. Jinnah wanted that Muslims' interest should be protected. He was apprehended that Hindus would dominate them. So he said, three-fourths of minorities' consent was required to pass any bill in any legislature, be it the union or the state. Any reorganization of territories not to affect the Muslim majority in Bengal, Punjab and NWFP. He also said that center legislature cannot make any changes in the territories of those states where Muslims were in majority. These states included Punjab, Northwest Frontier Province and Bengal. Separation of Sindh from Bombay Presidents. Sindh and Bombay Presidency should be separated since Sindh is a part where Muslims were in majority. Constitutional reforms in NWFP and Balochistan should be required and this should be done only by the Muslim authorities. Protection of religious, cultural, educational rights of the Muslim community was also one of his demands. Now we will discuss what was the reaction of the Congress party to Motilal Nehru's report? Congress, in the session held at Calcutta in 1928, there was a controversy between passing or not passing or failing of the Motilal Nehru report. A bitter controversy arose over the Nehru report. 
the younger generation led by subhash chandra bose and jawahar lal nehru demanded complete independence and not the dominion status as declared in the nehru report but under the timely intervention of gandhi ji dominion status was accepted if it was to be granted before the end of 1929 in congress also there was a controversy whether to accept or to reject pandit motilal nehru report leaders like subhash chandra bose and jawahar lal nehru wanted complete independence they were not satisfied with the dominion status or internal sovereignty only but with the help of gandhi ji motilal nehru report was passed in the congress session but the demand was that the dominion status would be given to india at the end of 1929 to make it sure an ultimatum was given to the government a warning was given to the government the congress would start non violent non cooperation movement if dominion status was not guaranteed within date so fixed congress said that if they would not be provided with the dominion status they would start an agitation against the british government <clears throat> and now we will discuss the reaction of the british government to the nehru report when congress declared that they want dominion status within a fixed period of time In 1929 the labor party came to power in britain simon wrote a letter to british prime minister ramsay macdonald adjusting a conference of representatives of both british india and indian states for reaching an agreement they would be satisfied only if the dominion status would be provided to them within the time period they required that indian should be given the dominion status and now we will discuss what was the reaction of the british government to nehru report in britain that was a time when elections were held in 1929 the labor party came to power in britain for the first time simon wrote a letter to prime minister ramsay macdonald adjusting a conference of the representatives of both british india and indian states for reaching an agreement this suggestion was accepted irwin the viceroy of that time after his return from london declared on october 31st 1929 the dominion status was natural issue of india's constitutional progress so under the guidance of the labor party the prime minister of england ramsay macdonald the viceroy of india lord irwin indirectly by his speech accepted the dominion status have to be provided and it was natural on part of indians to ask for the dominion status in india then a meeting was arranged gandhi ji along with motilal nehru met viceroy lord irwin on december 23 1929 and demanded definite insurance that dominion status would be granted to india but the viceroy was unable to give such an insurance so gandhi ji it began meeting that the gandhi irwin pact was futile mahatma gandhi met with lord irwin and he asked that within the specific time that means at the end of 1929 they wanted dominion status irwin failed to give any assurance or any promise so with that the gandhi irwin pact came to an end and now we will discuss that after ending of the motilal nehru report as a failure when irwin failed to provide any sort of assurance that dominion status would be given to indians at the act of 1929 pandit jawaharlal nehru who was always in favor of complete independence in lahore session declared that now the demand of the congress was not to get the dominion status in fact the demand of the congress 
was now to get complete independence or purna swaraj that means india wanted to free itself from internal as well as external policies so pandit jawaharlal nehru in lahore session december 29 1929 he put a resolution according to that the complete independence or purna swaraj was the objective was set that congress wanted to secure it was also decided to boycott the round table conferences which was asked by indians to attend by lord irwin on 31st december 1929 jawaharlal nehru hoisted the tricolor national flag of india 26 january 1930 was fixed as the first independence day before independence indians used to get together and celebrate 26 january as independence day so 26 january had a lot of importance in the modern history of india in lahore session pandit jawaharlal nehru gave a presidential address to the people and the congressmen jawaharlal nehru's presidential address was a stirring call to action according to him we have now an open conspiracy to free this country from foreign rule and you the comrades the followers and all the countrymen and country women are invited to join it he gave an open challenge to the british government that he wanted to free himself from the foreign rule and all countrymen and women are invited to join this movement nehru also made it clear that liberation did not mean only throwing off foreign yoke it means getting into a right system i must frankly confess that i am a socialist and a republican he said he is a socialist socialist is a person who wanted that rich and poor should be equally treated and the gap between them should be reduced he also said he is a republican who did not believe in king and queens he is no believer in kings and princes of instant order which produces modern kings of industry he said kings and queens in politics produces kings and queens in industries that means imperialism who have greater power over the lives and fortunes of men and even the kings of old and whose methods are as predatory as those of old feudal aristocracy here pandit jawaharlal nehru has criticized the monarchical system the capitalist system and the old zamindari system that all have exploited the people the common masses he also spelled out the method of struggle he told what should be the method of struggle and freedom for the indians any great movement for liberation today must necessarily be a mass movement he said until and unless people of all the country unitedly will not stand against the british the movement could not be possible mass movements must essentially be peaceful but he told people that all the mass agitation should be peaceful there should be no violent activity in those agitations in times of organization if the principal movement is a peaceful one contemptuous attempts of spodic violence can only distract attention and weaken it he said if any mass movement is accompanied by violence it would only make the movement weaker one so students today we have discussed the simon commission its effect its recommendations then we have discussed the motilal nehru report where indian demanded the dominion status and after that we have discussed lahore session in 1929 where for the first time congress demanded purn swaraj or complete independence so in this module we have covered the following questions why were the indians dissatisfied with the montague chems for reforms mention the recommendations of the simon commission discuss the terms of nehru report how did 
the Muslim League react to Nehru report and what was the importance of 26 January 1930. If you want to explore more on this topic, you can see a YouTube link on your screen. You can search more on this topic. I hope this session had been fruitful for you. Take care of yourself and have a nice day. Thank you.